What is good? Word up. Good people. So it, it's it's been a minute since I since I did one of these. Uh, so I was very pleased to to feel the feeling of uh, wanting to do one again. Of waiting until it's time to admit. Waiting until I found the right muse, the right circumstance. Because I already knew what, what was uh, some variables that were going to be needed, which was mainly to uh, see someone talking about things that I've been going through. And uh, whenever they whenever they do it to a T, <laughs> it lights me up, and that's when I'm like, <laughs> that's that's when I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna transmit this uh, transmuting that's that's occurring. So yeah, once again. We out share with your boy, <laughs> Troy Casey, he's certified health nut, and once again, I have a card that I have pulled for the end, and um, unlike several of my previous ones, which I was drawing from the Oracle, the Sacred World Oracle, not, not the Tarot, <laughs> which is what I said in my live stream. It was actually the oracle. This time, though, it it, it is the tarot because uh, because that's that's what it needs to be. So yeah, we'll get into this real quick. Uh, everything about this, I'm all about. So like, we'll get right right straight in, like. The vibes, the the movements, the what's being integrated, like that's that's what I'm fucking doing. Uh, it's what a lot of us are doing. Um, even if we don't realize that we are doing it, a lot of us are, a, a lot of people are doing it because uh, so many people are catching the wave and surfing the sine waves. So yeah, let's let's just let's just fucking get into it. If you want to rock, it's just that fucking intro. I mean, uh, he's got the fucking Ikaru's going on, the fucking shamanic vibrations and reverberations, the harmonics. He's got fucking stretching, the uh, engaging the thoracic, the uh, the breath work. He's got the cold therapy going on, and like, this is shit that I've been engaging hardcore lately, so... Uh, once you're waiting for something and then and then it's presented to you in such a perfect way, it's like, well, <laughs> thank you, thank you, universe, thank you, God, whatever terminology you want to use, uh, for showing me when it is time to engage and further integrate, further realize that time doesn't exist, that uh, it's I'm trying to use different terminologies here 
beyond beyond like time it is the right um we are in the right perspective and position to be in a pure position or, or, or to tap into a purpose and to realize what is being what we are being guided into and towards and to choose a certain way, a certain path towards this. And I'll probably get into it a little bit. I'm pretty sure I'm, I will <laughs> with what's going to be said. Um, but a lot of this finding and seeking is is refining and coming to find and being reminded of what's real of uh, what is true and that's going to be that's going to come down to you and how you decide to engage in reality and like this is all a process for us here like we're you know we all have to uh, come up out of the spell of uh, what what we've been led into and a lot of times you know uh we we are presented with uh the, the fuck bags that that don't really know any better and so we're just like dude f go fuck yourself no you're not going to be in my reality you're not going to siphon off of me you're not going to vampire off of me or parasite my energy anymore and this is just a stage that we have to go through um, so that we can be more holistic and uh, tap into that homeostasis. And once we have that down, then we can realize that uh, the people that, that don't quite get it yet are, are uh, children in adult bodies. They're, they're still children uh, in spirit and in mind, and we have to treat them as such. It doesn't mean that we have to be um, either derogatory or like, uh, demeaning in any way it's it's a and you know it's just once again this is a process so uh that that may happen for the first you know so many times until we finally get what's going on then we can uh, come from a place of ah i don't i don't need to let myself go to a certain place yet because this person or whatever the circumstance may be you know, it's at a level that does not get it yet. So we we can aid in this uh, remembrance and, and not get caught up in the. Ugh! What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Fucking engaging ignorance and choosing the side, choosing to hold on to that ignorance. So we have to. Part of this process here of waking up is we have to realize that people are choosing to hold on to ignorance because they're afraid to let go of it. And, uh... It's going to be dependent upon the person, uh, whatever circumstance you find yourself in how you need to engage that if you, if you need to lay it on softly if you need to uh, have an abrupt immediate happening occur to where you lay it on thick and you let you let it be known what is what is what what is real what is up Or if you need to do it piece by piece, 
if there's many layers that need to be um, felt and integrated, then you have to kind of go layer by layer with people. Otherwise, they're um, just going to neglect and reflect, and they they will not want to go any deeper because of the layers of pain and trauma that they have built up. So this is what I've been going through lately with that as well as well as with my own shit of uh, integration and going into the shamanics, going into the cold, diving into the Wim Hof. Radically transform your life and take your health to the next level. Click on my Breath is Life course below. This will optimize your breath as well as your meditation. And I'll see you after the video. Hey guys, Troy Casey, Certified Health Nut, here on planet Earth today mm -hmm. to talk about Rip to 50, giving you guys all the tools, the baseline you guys need to have a strong, healthy, vital, virile life. And so today I brought on Ra, he wanted to talk about nature, he gets a lot of feedback, questions, people have some confusion about what nature is, how it can tune us up, how it can heal us naturally. So you're, you're, you're... Alright, this isn't a very long video, so I may or may not play all of it, because it's only like seven minutes, but, I mean, there's a lot here, so I'm going to stop frequently and um, extrapolate, correlate, uh, integrate, and uh, migrate into a uh, certain navigation. That's right. But, uh, like I say frequently, is that uh, people shy away from their true nature because they uh, they do not go out in nature. They do not, they do not expose themselves, their, their whole totality of their being, to nature. And because of this, um, this, this goes right into the indoctrination systems to teach you to rely upon the system that slowly siphons and vampires and parasites your energy away from you. Every fucking minute, every fucking second that you do not spend out in nature, you are getting your energy siphoned. Realize this. So, bearing yourself to the natural forces. This strengthens your, not just your body, but your mentality, and thus your spirit, your level of integration. And so when you choose to do things like plant spirit medicines, diving down deep into the psyche, deep into the levels and layers that you have uh, built up bullshit upon layers of bullshit, layers of bullshit upon the, uh, the, the true isness, the quintessential essence of what you are. You remember and re-engage how to break these layers down. And we can do this with uh, little helpers like plant medicines. We can do this with engaging the elements, the elementals, the ethers. But ultimately it comes back down to a mentality. So it's being aware whenever we do engage everything, anything and everything. And this is, you know, the, the, the now. It's, it's, it's the moment. It's, it's re-tapping. It's tapping back into your mentality of being aware in every single moment. Not letting yourself become lazy or lackadaisical or Falling prey to 
things that get you worked up, but choosing to, to take a step back and realizing, hey, yes, I'm being presented with something, but hey, guess what? You have the final say in how you choose. To respond how you choose to react so the problem here is that people have been taken from the their natural state of being put into boxes the box mind state which is uh, apartments houses uh, boxed cars, boxed offices, uh, the workplace, uh, the whole boxed mind state uh, cuts you off from the spherical realm, uh, from being in the uh, all that is, and remembering how to feel again. So this issue with nature is that we have forgotten how to listen to our inner nature and integrate with as within so without. You were talking a little bit earlier Ra, about some of the feedback that you've got. So what is on the template of mankind's mind right now? So essentially a lot of people are asking questions and it's a lot of how to. How do you go outside? And a lot of the questions are are before the people think about it, right? So, in my word, there. That was, uh. That's exactly what it is. It, um, the people, and uh, like I just said, they become lazy in thought. They, they uh, have given up their ability to think for themselves because they have relied upon the system to think for them. Oh no, I just need to go towards you know, a healthcare provider or someone who knows better. And, and yes, there are people who are specialists, but we have to be very wary. We have to uh, reattune how to listen to our intuition. Because a lot of the specialists have been taught bullshit. So uh, it's up to us to educate ourselves now. But I'm I'm uh, presented with this more and more is that people, the vast majority of people, do not want to think for themselves. They have been uh, they have take taken the bait, hook, line, and sinker, and they have given their free will, essentially, they have given their free will away because um, they have given their thought, their their ability to choose, they have given that away. And it's gotten to the point where I have told people recently where, um, that, you know, your, your mentality is of such that you are regurgitating the things that you have, uh, that you listen to, that you fill your head with constantly. And there's very little novelty there anymore. And uh, they kind of took offense to that, but I'm like, that that was the point. I wanted you to feel something from that. Because yes, that's kind of an offensive thing to say, but it doesn't mean that it's not true. And hopefully that, that agitates you enough to think about it. Realize what free thought is. We realize where um, most of your fucking thoughts are coming from. Which is the bullshit scripts that you have been led to believe in. Through your indoctrination systems. I, I actually said off air there are a lot of stupid questions. 
And I think they're stupid because the people, they don't see the benefit, so they want to ask a question before they do. And, and, and how, how, how many times and how much are you brought up in that there's no stupid questions? Well, the, thing, the problem is, is that there's, and it's not stupid, I wouldn't use that word, I would have used the word ignorant because... Um, then you could extrapolate upon, you know, what ignorance is ignoring, you're ignoring, um, life. And that's why there is such a thing as stupid fucking questions, because they're ignorant. They're, they're not willing to engage for themselves, to experience life for themselves in order to answer your own questions. That's step one here people and this is also something I've been going through is realizing that people aren't even on step one yet to start to answer their own questions so I have to get um, to a place to where I can get people on just just fucking step one that they start to dive in um, the mentality of uh, finding shit out for themselves like that that's the first fucking hurdle for people it is to get out of the mind state of uh, being fed bullshit and to start investigating, doing their own soul archaeology. Start doing more and more inner work and realizing the interconnectedness between as within, so without. Their inner world, whenever you clean your shit up inside, it's going to reflect outside. You're going to attract things on the outside that reflect this cleansing process you have done inside. The clarity will be reflected back to you. Don't take my word for anything. Do this for yourself. Engage Gnosis. And that's that's it's counterintuitive because all you have to do is literally go outside. I don't you don't have to ask somebody to <laughs> Outside, exactly. And this is in reference because we have the hashtag butthole sunning that Ra started, went viral for the last seven or eight weeks. Um, and so uh, what we're recommending is people just get their genitals out into the sun, expose them to all sorts, uh, uh, the source of all life on earth. Yup. Get that taint in the sun. Whenever we have sun here, I uh, I always get my genitals out in the sun and just just everywhere where where you know the quote unquote sun doesn't shine. Just get it in everywhere. As much as you can. Find a place where you don't have to worry about being naked or people seeing you or whatever, and just. Allow your body to soak it up. And also lately, whenever the sun is uh, at certain places, this is something you're just going to be drawn to. This is uh, getting into sun gazing. Uh, you're just going to be drawn to it uh, instinctively to start to gaze at the sun and have sun meditations. Um, either during the uh, sunrise or the sunset. You're just going to be drawn to it. And it's not something you necessarily need to seek out or be like, oh hey, oh, sun gazing is this and this and this and you can experience this and that. Well, it's up to you. This is what I'm saying. Experience Gnosis. Um, have your own kind of uh, unique experience with it. Realize uh, what you can do with it. Whenever you gaze into the sun for so long, and then close your eyes, and then see the after image, and then focus on that after image, and you can bring it back into a clarity. This is, this is going to strengthen your sight. This is going to strengthen your ability to see. Not just without, but within. So we sun gaze for a minute. Then we close our eyes, and you can also rub your hands together vigorously, 
and put them over your eyes and then focus on the after image. You can also do this with a flame. Stare at a flame and then focus on the after image with the eyes closed. And then witness whenever you can still your thoughts, still your mind, still your sight. And that image becomes more and more clear. It becomes very vibrant until you can open up um, a lot of, uh, you can tap into uh, your mind's eye and your pineal gland. You can tap into the, to the DMT if you want to call it that. Uh, the sun just for 30 seconds not burn your skin etc and so this is this is feedback from that yes but it's the the amount of questions on how to do something like get out into the sun is a little mind-blowing to me it is and the only thing the only indicator the only indication of why is because people don't really get the importance of it and they're and this is becoming uh, more and more widespread, and it, it's it's not just that people don't get the importance of it, it's that they have been um, indoctrinated to the point where they are comfortable in being numb. So they'll ask questions about stuff that, oh, I, I'm interested in this, but they're not interested enough to engage it, because if they were, they would just fucking do it. So this is the layer that we have to realize that we're working with with people, is that you know we we out here engaging it and doing the damn thing, and then other people out here talking the talk, but they don't want to walk the walk. So we have to uh, build up a layer of uh, um, you know between us, between the real, between the truth, and between the bullshit. So that we we have our own little litmus test that happens, where we know if people are really about it, or we can detect, we can start to feel uh, if, if, if they're just uh, interested in talking about it, but they don't, they're not interested in engaging it. And I've been through this on many levels with people with meditation. With cold therapy, with uh, sun gazing, with Orin, with many things, many levels of diet and deities. People want to talk the talk, they don't want to engage, they want to talk like they're badasses, but when it comes down to, um, you know, uh, that's getting into another, <laughs> uh, yeah. Another layer of what I've been going through lately is people want to talk like they're badasses, but then whenever I invite them to come and, and show that they're, you know, badasses, they, they, sh they don't want to do that. So, uh, I, I immediately, um, put on the table, hey, you want to talk the talk? Let's go walk the walk. Let's go do that. Oh, no, 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 I can't do that. I don't have time for that. No, come on. You have time to fucking talk like you're big shit. Come on, let's go improve it. Let's go. And it's not just so I can go beat someone's ass. I don't I do not do that. I, I humble people. I give uh, lessons. So that, so that people can realize where their folly is. And they can embedder themselves, strengthen themselves. Realize why they're doing what they are doing to themselves. Not really going to get it until you do it. So that's the essence of what we're talking about is that you must practice and experience it. You're not going to be able to understand. Thank you, motherfucker. If you don't have the experience. Thank you. And like I said, you know, many times before, the industrial age is over with, guys. In fact, the information age, I postulate, is over with as well. All the information is on Google. We are moving into the age of authenticity. The age 
and basically when I when I, whenever I listened to that, I was like, yeah, I I need to fucking share this and, and uh, make a video uh, in sharing this. Because this is the change of the ages here. The age of information has uh, transformed now into the age of the image. And whenever you are able, and this, this is just everything I was talking about previously, being able to tap into the image, you are able to tap into if the image is a living image, as in, is it true? Is it everlasting? Is it pi? Is it Fibonacci? Or is it an image of stagnation? Is it dead? Is it numbing? And yes, numbers can be numbing, but they can also flow. You can also have a frequency and a, uh, a sequence with them to where they they flow continuously. And that's the beauty of pi and phi and the golden mean and to uh, become start to become aware of uh, all these codings that are well beyond any kind of numbers and it goes beyond that uh, stagnation matrix into the living matrix And then you can also start to tap into uh, different kinds of languages and dissolving your language, dissolving your barriers of needing to have thought to experience reality. Releasing, and this is meditation, releasing, and this is realizing that life is meditation. Life is yoga, life is whatever you choose to make it. And it's whatever you choose to focus on. It's whatever you choose. You have the choice. Age of implementation. It's no longer about Thank what you. the blogosphere says. It's what you can actually pull off in your biology, physiology, and psychology. And so it has no ballast in reality unless you can make it real inside your own system. <laughs> so when you hear something about nature or you're curious or you're curious uh... about butthole sunning or you're curious about getting natural tan, natural energy, natural food into your body, natural food will protect you against the natural sun, etc., then you're going to have to test these things. Exactly. And what you're saying is that people are so caught up into their head, they're not in their body, and so they're questioning everything. Is that the feedback you're getting, Rob? Yeah. And all the great thinkers, Plato, exactly. Hermes, Socrates, all of these people, they learned their lessons by observing nature. You look at all the, the ancient monolithic sites, Emerson, Thoreau, they're all... And absolutely, this is where, where we have to begin. But then, you know, you have to realize that you have to go through the layer of once you start observing, you realize that you're observing through a lens of bullshit. And so you have to dissolve that layer of that lens of bullshit to where you can start to observe clearly. And this is why we out here talking about meditation and focus and reaching a point where you can experience the, the now, you know, just the moment for what it is. And, and you don't have any kind of layers of bullshit um, intruding or degrading your experience. So we're talking, we out here talking about experiencing in the pure state. What are the most beneficial ways to experience in the pure state? Well, how about you tap in, tap back into your tr true essential nature. And once again, as within, so without. Go out in nature. Listen. Bear witness to what is happening all around you. And the more you tap into the silence and stillness inside of you, whenever you are out in nature, you can start to tap into the 
all that is. You start to pick up upon things out in nature. All the little harmonics and the breeze, the wind, you pick up on all of it, how it's all communicating. All the little insects and animals and all the sounds. You start to listen to the trees again. You start to remember what is within. But you have to take it upon yourself to do this. You have to get out in nature and do this for yourself. You have to find that place inside. Focus. Twenty twenty vision is not given. You have to earn it. You have to cultivate it for yourself. Align to nature. They're all aligned to the sun. There's a reason for this. And essentially, if you want the answer, go immerse yourself amongst the earth. We are earthlings. So for me, go thank you. Both these guys are fucking on it. Fucking legit. I'll post a link to this. So you can uh, re watch the rest of it if you so choose. But uh, I'll share this card before I end this. Maybe. That is the Sage of Pentacles. And whenever I drew that, I was like, that is perfection. So we will see what is to be said in red about the Sage. There we go. In a lush orchard, a monarch sits on his wooden throne. Flowers and greenery surround him, and a spotted pig lies at his feet. <laughs> Once again, synchronicity, synchronicity for me. The Sage of Pentacles rules with a steady hand and a kind heart. With the years of experience behind him, he stewards both people and resources wisely, powerful and successful in the worldly realm. He has no need to prove himself to anyone. His outer achievements grow out of an inner peace, a satisfaction that stems from a deep appreciation for life, steeped in the cycles of nature, 
the sage brings patience and practicality to everything he does. He may appear in our life as a strong and serene person. He may also be a calling on you to find your own stable center. And that's magical. I, I didn't know I was going to read that. But that's everything that I just fucking said. So yeah, find your sage, find your mage, find your muse. And find the silence. Engage the silence. Dissolve your language and linguistics, linguistics and layers that you have been taught to engage and filter and siphon reality down into a word, a box. Release that and go out into nature and just experience and sit in silence and feel. And yes, I know it's cold out right now, but still find those moments where you can just be and, and feel. Feel the cold. Engage all of it. Engage the cold. Engage the hot. Engage the polarities and find the homeostasis in it. This is why the extremes are the way they are right now, so that we can integrate them. So do this. <laughs> integrate and navigate and migrate towards this. clear translation of what is going on within and without. Engage Gnosis. Find out for yourself what is what. We out you. Much love. Peace.